the first time it happened, I was heading home from a bar. <laughs> Legally, I shouldn't have been driving, but I felt I was safe and I only lived a couple of miles away. It was a Sunday evening. I'd had too much the night before, so <laughs> I was taking it easy. My job is miserable enough without a hangover on top of it. In hindsight, it was the opposite of the perfect amount of buzzed. I wasn't drunk enough to write off what had happened as just a thing I imagined, and not sober enough to preserve a useful memory of the event. I was at a stoplight, about to turn left on Woodland Drive. While fiddling with the radio, I felt what I can best describe as a vice lock down around my right ankle and pull my foot down on the gas pedal all the way to the floor. My tire squealed, and me and the old Cutlass Supreme barreled through the thankfully empty intersection. I pulled my leg back as hard as I could, and after two or three seconds, I was free again. Luckily, 5 was not in sight, otherwise it would have been another night in the drunk tank. I parked Mary Jane, <laughs> yes, that's what I call her, on the street in front of my house and vaulted out of the driver's side like I was sitting in a Bond-esque ejector seat. Before you could say, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, I was in bed, with the covers securely around my neck. That night, sleep was at least as fitful as you would imagine. Monday morning sun stampeded through my blinds like a soulful, ethnic mother, waking her kid up for school. I had the standard post-night-out flashback accounting of events. <laughs> Went to O'Malley's. Check. Got shot down by three different gentlemen's sixes. Check. Strode out to the V8. And... <laughs> had a mysterious hand of steel force me into multiple traffic violations. No. No way. Hold the hell on. There's no way that I, I can be thinking that I remember what really happened. Actually, there is a pretty easy answer here. <laughs> Night terrors. Had them since I was a kid. That must be what happened. The drinking every night is finally catching up with me. Dreams and reality are blurring. The truth is, I'm kind of relieved. I've been looking for rock bottom, and now I found it. <laughs> Time to jump on that AA bandwagon. 9.23 AM. I arrive at the office. That is kind of my <laughs> on time. With last night's dreams or events or whatever, pushed as far to the back of my mind as I can manage. I plop down in front of my computer. After the requisite hour it takes me to plow through the emails that came in last night. The trusty feeling of only being almost behind enough to get fired settles in. Time to fire up that aged first gen iPad mini I keep hidden in the desk drawer and check on my Town Hall 9 account. We are in a war after all. I give the handle that magic up-and-back pull it requires to open her up. I grab the tablet from the back, and, at that moment, all hell breaks loose. An unalcohol related ice-cold hand encompasses my wrist and violently jerks my hand deeper into the drawer. I let out an involuntary shriek, steady my left hand on the desk, Stand up as much as I can, and try to pull myself free. After a moment, I am loose of the frigid grip and stumble back a few steps. This, of course, draws the attention of my cube neighbours. I stab the hell out of my finger. There was a thumbtack or something in my drawer. I stutter out. Cradling my hand, I walk quickly to the restroom. There was no wound to treat, but damn it if I didn't need a moment to myself. After more than a few minutes staring into the mirror, 
and a few splashes of water on my face, I headed back to my desk. For the rest of the day, I sat as still as possible, ignored my desk phone every time it rang, and punched out at 5pm on the dot. I was more than a bit wary of Mary Jane, but I really needed to get home. The heavy mechanical click of the key in the door lock was always satisfying to me. To call her a classic is a stretch, but she used to be my mom's car. I've been driving her every day since Ma passed. (laughs) A bit of a tribute to the old bag, I guess. I couldn't stand her, but that doesn't mean I didn't love her. It did hurt a little when she passed took a nasty tumble down the basement stairs. She laid there for three or four days. The coroner wasn't exactly sure how long she'd been dead, but he said the fall almost certainly killed her immediately. The head trauma was such that, if anything, she only survived unconscious for an hour or two. I was the one who found her. It was on one of my obligatory check-ins. Might make me sound like an asshole, but I was the only family left, and I didn't want her willing what she had to some charity or the like. I stayed as close as I had to. Now, don't judge me too harshly. It wasn't like I was the apple of her eye or anything. My older brother, the family success, died in a car crash ten years ago. Dad was long gone. Liver cirrhosis. (laughs) go figure. Point is, if I hadn't stumbled across the scene, she'd probably still be there rotting on the concrete floor. I made it back home without incident. The order of business was simple. Slam a handful of sleep aid and hit the sheets before the booze craving started. I slept pretty well, all things considered. (laughs) It was fascinating. Almost like a science experiment, waking up without a hangover. Hey, maybe this is what turning over a new leaf feels like, I said to myself. I was up at 7.30, made a breakfast that did not consist of fudge-dipped granola bars and cigarettes, and was out of the door in time to be early for work. I completed the first honest day's work in months. Even stayed a few minutes late and bounced out the door with what I can only describe as a spring in my step. I think AA probably has a term for the false high you experience when you make it through 24 hours of not debasing yourself. (laughs) Not that I cared. It's 2am and I'm awake. My mind is a train wreck. I'm going a mile a minute, thinking about what has happened the last couple of days. There doesn't seem to be an answer other than, I'm going nuts. I'm hallucinating to the point my body is actually manufacturing physical phenomena. It's obviously not possible that an invisible hand is randomly grabbing my extremities. So, the only option is that it's all in my head. (laughs) Yeah... I need a drink. My bedside lamp is always on and shines most of the way to the kitchen, so I roll out of bed and start walking in that direction. I round the corner and am immediately enveloped in ink black darkness. The light that once poured down the hallway behind me is gone. I turn quickly and take a frantic step back the way I came. Nothing. No light at all. I reach out for the wall next to me to fumble for the switch, but I grasp not a thing except for empty space. Another step, another reaching out, and still nothing. I feel a panic attack rage to life, but before I can even experience the second tachycardic beat of my heart, A hand roughly grabs the top of my head and jerks me face first to the floor. I managed to turn my head slightly just before contact. I avoided smashing my face, 
but caught a pretty serious impact on my right cheek. There wasn't time to worry about the wet cracking sound it made, because the hand began dragging me forward, deeper into the nothing. For a moment I swatted at the hand, but never felt it. It was like it could touch me, but I could not touch it. With no other options, I planted my palms on the floor, pulled my head back, and pushed as hard as I could in the opposing direction. Rather than pull me harder, the hand went with my motion and pushed me back while pulling me up. Not prepared for this, I was brought quickly to my knees. Then, taking full advantage of my surprise, the hand slammed me back down to the ground again. Stars exploded in front of my eyes, and I passed out. Not more than a minute later, I started a seemingly impossible voyage back to consciousness. A concussion in real life isn't like the movies. When the secret agent whacks the evil henchman from behind, the guy should either wake up in about 30 seconds, or he is in a coma. There really isn't an in-between. As my vision slowly focused, I could make out the light coming from my bedroom and the light switch on the wall just above me. In the time it took to notice those two things, pain blossomed in my cheek, like someone was drilling into it with a three-quarter inch spade bit. <sighs> hospital. I have to go to the hospital. I've driven in worse shape, but I don't pay insurance premiums for nothing, so 911 and an ambulance it is. To make a long story <laughs> a little longer, after some x-rays at the emergency room, I was diagnosed with three cracks in my right cheekbone. None of it required surgery, and there's no such thing as a face cast. So they sent me home with a couple of sweet pain med scripts and a note for work. I had to take a cab home, which ended up working out just fine, because that meant I could start the pill popping in the back seat. When I arrived in the drive, the opiates were just taking effect. After a soft and squishy walk to my room, I eased myself onto the bed and was out before I could get both shoes off. Four hours later, my eyes ripped wide open, as though they were spring-loaded. Why the fuck did I tell the cabbie to take me back home? I was still super buzzed, but primordial terror does have at least some amount of sobering effect. Thankfully, I'd left all of the lights on, so I could quickly get to my car keys and stumble out of the front door. It was dusk, just starting to get dark. I poured myself into Mary Jane and coaxed that four-barrel car up to life. I have to get away from here, but I don't have many friends that I can knock on their door unannounced to and expect a warm response. My drug addled mind can only think of one place to go for guaranteed entrance. Mum's old house. After 15 minutes, I'm pulling into the drive. The driver's side door has never creaked a day in her life, but it made the sound of tearing sheet metal when I opened it. The air had a nasty cold bite. Dead leaves rustled and, I kid you not, thunder clapped in the not too distant area. I clumsily made my way to the front door. I leaned into the door, my intention being to find some support while I looked for the right key. But as soon as my shoulder touched the aged wood, she swung open and I fell to the foyer floor. I landed snow angel style. Light from the street lamp shone in, illuminating me head to foot. With the exception, however, of my left arm. The way I landed, 
That arm was in a shadow created by the banister of the old, twisting staircase. I don't know why I registered this, but I did. And the moment I did, those icy fingers wrapped around my wrist and jerked me down the hall. Struggling, kicking, grabbing, screaming, and knocking over furniture I was never allowed to touch before. The long hallway of the middle of the house flashed past me. The hand releases and I am back in the dark. Now, it's especially terrifying because it's all finally coming together. It's the dark. The hands, or whatever they are, they are in the dark. I have to get out of the dark. This is about the time I really start wishing I'd not told the power company to cut off the electricity. The street lamps help an amount, but nothing substantive. Thankfully, I'm a smoker, and I hate not having a light. As such, I always have a lighter and a matchbook in my jacket. Starting with the lighter, I flick it to life. The hand had let me go in the dining room. As if this room wasn't filled with enough bad mojo, from mum smacking me across the face with a wooden spoon for not finishing my sprouts. The dancing flame creates myriad shadows and forms that tease the hell out of my imagination. Literally one freaking step forward and a hand grabs the back of my shirt. <sighs> as screwed up as it is, this is becoming a normal thing for me. Rather than let it catch me off guard this time, I push forward harder. My shirt rips, but I damn sure advance. Crushing over two chairs and that little cart with wheels, pretentious assholes have in their dining rooms, I made my way out to the kitchen. Passing through the doorway, my left leg was the last to cross the threshold. I feel a searing pain in my calf as the sharp nails from the unseen hand dig deeply into it. I pulled away again, but not without losing something in the process. My jeans audibly tore, and I heard as well as felt a not insignificant amount of my flesh go with the stone-washed fabric. Hobbling, I struggle into the hallway. I could see the door twenty-five feet in front of me. Then, in a moment, pure black darkness slammed shut across my path, not an arm's reach away. I don't know how to describe it. It was a darkness so complete and comprehensive that it was as though the front half of the house no longer existed. It was like staring at a sheet of black construction paper. I held the lighter slightly out in front of me and towards the void. The light did not penetrate it. It was a black hole, swallowing up each stray photon and refusing to let them bounce back. I turned around and found nothing but more of the same nothingness behind me. Frozen on the five square feet where the laws of physics still worked, <laughs> there wasn't much I could do. Then it hit me with the force of hangover morning sunshine. The basement has an exterior door, and more importantly, I'm standing beside the basement access door. Flinging the door open, I was met by a welcome sight. <laughs> Normal darkness. The kind where my lighter makes shadows. I hurtled down the steps two at a time. At least for the first four. As my foot raised from the fourth step, the hand returned. Wrapping those frigid tendrils around my ankle once again, the hand rooted my foot in place. 
my forward motion was too much to stop, and I fell head first. The first impact finished the job of shattering my right cheek. As I rolled over, my back cracked against the corner of a step, effectively breaking it and severing my spinal cord. At least I couldn't feel my hip dislocated as the concrete floor abruptly broke my fall. <sighs> this fucking house, I swore. Here I am, laying at the bottom of the same stairs that killed my hag of a mother, about to die myself. It isn't the fucking house, wheezed out from the darkness. It's you. You pathetic piece of garbage! Before I had time to be terrified, the single bare bulb in the basement stuttered to life. Looking around the room, there is nothing, or rather, no one. Clearly the hallucinations have one last screw you in mind for me. But then, then, there's a slight shuffling sound. From underneath the stairs, a figure slowly materializes out of the shadows. My mother, clothed in the dress she was buried in, stepped forward. She walked towards me with a spider-like, almost stop-motion gait. She knelt down, inches from my face. She reeked of rot and decay. Her voice was like an ice pick through my ears. You know, killing me was the only thing you ever did well. Hiding under the stairs, grabbing my foot so I fell. That almost shows an ounce of intelligence. And you know, I simply had to get you back here to tell you so. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it was a real joy reaching out and giving you a little taste of what I had experienced. But now, now you're going to be here with me for a very long time. See, the coroner was wrong. I didn't die immediately. I didn't even have the luxury of losing consciousness from the fall and dying more or less in my sleep. You don't know, because you never look back. But I watched you walk out from under the stairs. I watched you scamper back up those stairs like a pathetic little frightened bunny. Yes, I couldn't speak or even move at all. But my eyes and my mind were just fine. I laid there, where you are now. In the dark for a full day before I died. You know how parents always say some bullshit about how they want their kids to have more than they did. I never felt that way about you before. But now, now that I'm dead, I finally understand it. I do want you to have more. So, so much more. Instead of one short day here, I'm going to give you all the time in the world. With that final his sentence, the single bare bulb went dark. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. 
go on. I've got plenty more stories to tell you. 